Oh, hello. Do you want to hear a story? Well, okay then. Once upon a time, in an off-sales or liquor store near you, stood a dusty, old, non-aged stated whiskey. Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Review with me, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me as always. And uh, is this time review number 105, part four of a series in which I'm looking at some non-age stated whiskies. This time, the turn of a family-owned distillery from uh, Isla Kilhoman. And this one, the Sanig. So Kilhoman Sanig, bottled at 46%, non-chill filtered, no colour added. That is a dark whisky there to have no colour added to it. Now, this whisky for me has been a bit of an, throughout this bottle, has been a bit of a roller coaster in fairness. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. I don't know why. It's just been, it was suggested to me that I, I, I made a point one time that I liked sort of a peated malt um, with a bit of sherry maturation and uh, loving the Kilhoman Machir Bay. It was suggested to me that if I liked that extra hint of sherry for more sherry influence to give the San Diego go. So I jumped straight in and, and, and bought a bottle at that time. And as I say, it's just been a roller coaster since then with this one. It's I don't know. I don't know. Shall we just get into it? Because when I did my tasting notes, it was a different beast again. It, it, I had it recently and I wasn't sure about it. it. I just find it a bit of a confusing whiskey. So let's just tell you how I feel about it, what I think of it, what the tasting notes are. And then you can make your own choice. How does that sound? Now, <laughs> picture if you can, smoking red wine, you're drinking red wine and there's at a campfire, right? You're smoking red wine at a campfire. There's, it, there's a red wininess and smoke, smoke. This is a peated malt. As a matter of fact, smoke, and uh, leather. So you're <laughs> you're sitting on a leather chair, a good, fresh, as in there's a good strong smell of leather off that chair. Drinking your red wine at a campfire, and there's a barbecue at that campfire. And on it, they are it's like a, it's bacon or like a, I want to say like a burning, almost burnt bacon or crisp bacon or Pork ribs, yes, pork ribs. If you're vegetarian, I apologize. I, I can't think of a of something that smells like that, that, that isn't that, if you get my, my meaning. And let's say, <laughs> shall we? Rich Christmas cake. Yeah, there, there's, I'm getting really rich Christmas cake here. All that dried fruit, raisins, currants mixed peel and even going down as far as the glass a cherries I'm, I'm getting that sweet manufactured smell creme brulee so there's a hint of vanilla but there's a there's also yet again it's that burnt thing so you know the, the way they toast the top of a creme brulee and it's sugary yeah and also a hint of freshly cut wood for the fire, shall we say. This is turning into a hell of a party, isn't it? So uh, what's it like on the palate then? If, it's, if, if it does all that in the nose, which I love, I said, it, it, weirdly yet again, you know, until I sat down to do my tasting notes on it, every time up to that that I had it, it was either 
good. Not, you know, blow your socks off, good. It was just good or very average, I thought. But when I sat down and did my tasting notes, I, I found it quite incredible. Bitter sweet and savoury arrival. That savoury is definitely there. Burnt toffee, or, well, burnt sugar. Something that's been over caramelised in a pan. Smoky but sweet. Slightly dry. But also mouth watering. You can understand how I find this whiskey a little confusing. It's incredibly rich, almost chewy. That fruit cake's all there in the palate, and even now it comes with a hint of marzipan, and your almonds, etc. And even the sweetness is there, like the icing. And cherry throat sweets. We used to have ones. We used to have a specific brand here called Tunes. Tunes. There's those who'll know them. This was in the UK. I'm not sure how, how far spread they were. But definitely this is like cherry tunes. More creme brulee, more barbecue, more pork ribs, more ish. It just becomes incredibly moorish. You just want to keep going at it. Although the finish is a little dry, the bitterness of burnt ends or burnt food hangs around a little. That, that bitterness you would get off a, a bit of overcooked bacon does tend to hang around a little in the back of the palate. That finish is quite long. It is long, dry, peppery, smoky, slightly bitter, burnt ends. But, still very moorish. So let's add some water. There's not a lot left in this glass. But we shall add some water. It can take quite a bit. For 46%, it's it's quite forgiving. Let that water settle in it. Let this settle. Yeah, yet again, since taking my tasting notes, that bitterness is quite strong in that it just is a memory of burnt meat. Some straight off a barbecue that, that there's just burnt crispy bits that leave that bitter tinge right in the back of your palate. Sweeter, the addition of water, sweeter, more sherry, less, less smoky, definitely. Big, big, hefty notes. Yeah, I, I mean, the water is just exploding now. Rich, sweet, creamy. Bitterness is toned out a little with the addition of water. And it's all about toffee and smokiness and just Moorishness. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, finish. Remains quite long. Remains quite dry. You would just drink, in my opinion, you would just drink this with water. Because it does improve it. You still get all that stuff that I explained when it was neat. But it just brings it down to a more palatable level. 
still still a roller coaster whiskey it, it it is up it's down it's left right it's upside down it's just weird and that it that confuses me it's a it's a very very rich whiskey very powerful whiskey but uh you know <laughs> i i would would have recommend it yeah i'll i i replace this bottle because i want to relive that you know it, it's one of those things that it, it's just a bit off the wall and i want to i would want to relive that again i prefer the macker bay as their whiskies go and i'm sort of working my way up through them i still think the macker bay is an incredible whiskey Remember, these are probably relatively young. Well, I imagine they are relatively young. So, there's some great stuff to come from Kilhoman. And until then, these are not a bad place to be. So, let's move on, shall we? So, you like this? What would I recommend to you? Well, hmm, I had a couple of ideas in my head and I mean they're some sherry some not so much some not at all maybe and uh, and actually the one that I've chosen if and I mean it's, it's a bit silly because chances of getting your hands on one are probably pretty slim but I'm going to offer it up to you anyway it's the Kill Karen heavily painted and this the batch too and it's one that I always find this an incredible this is one of my favorite whiskies and the fact that it's called heavily peated has probably put people off in the past because I don't find it that heavily peated. I just find it incredibly well made. And when it's incredibly well made, then they know, to me then, that distiller knows how to balance that. They know how to manipulate it into such a shape that there's no... And this is the only way I can describe it myself. There's no pointy bits. It's just round and beautiful and, and a thing to admire. And that's the way I look at, at the Kilcarran heavily painted batch too. Probably any batch in fairness. So, you know, I'm only suggesting here that I had other things in my mind that, and I mean, you're not, you'll probably struggle to get a bottle of this ever here's what i'll do i'll offer you up one that you can get and it's uh the douglas lang rock island sherry so you know this is what i would recommend to you Kilcarran heavily painted hard to get so i'm also going to throw out there douglas lang rock island sherry there you go so one of them would be my recommendation if you like Kilhoman Sani. Definitely one of the weirdest. And when I say weird, it's just because it, it it's just different every time you go back to it. Once again, is that different? I it probably isn't. It's probably me, it's probably you, it's the person that's drinking it. But I just find it bizarre that you, you you can't, it always has you on your toes. It's not a whiskey. For me, in my opinion, it's not a whiskey. Go into a bar and order along with a beer or whatever. This, for me, and I think this sums up Come Home and Sanic best, as a whiskey to sit down and savour and even sit and try and pick out those notes and try and find things in it. If, if you like peated malt, if you like sherry bombs, if you like, you know, it, it would be a good one to, to test you to pick you apart and for you to pick apart. So there you go. I, I can't really say much more than that. Roller coaster. Anyway, 
Until the next time, thank you very, very much for joining me. Very much appreciate it, as always. Thank you very, very much to my patrons. If you wish to join that group, the details are below. Till the next time, here's your good health, my friends. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.